My memory isn't what it used to be, but uh, you know, there were special moments when I started discovering that these cars had some history, uh, that both of them had been hill climbed. And in fact, uh, in 1958, I believe at Rossfeld, uh, both these cars were entered in a hill climb, and this one, driven by Hans Stuck, Sr., took first in class, a Mercedes-Benz took second, and uh, Helm Glerkler drove that one to third place. So they competed against each other. It's exciting to find out that there's something different or special about the car. Uh, in the ownership or in that it was raced or shown and uh, yeah that was that was fun uh, in particular with number 89 here 70089 uh, I had written to uh, someone at uh, BMW and I said all the all the photos that you're offering for sale on the web are either this car or its successor, Stuck was given a different car the following year. And I says, do you have any pictures of that car? And the license plate, I knew the license plate because I had the service and repair records. And Ruth Stantfuss, I believe that was her name, wrote back and said, no, we have no pictures of any other cars. Uh, well, she said, we have one that we don't offer for sale because we can't identify the car. And she sent a Xerox copy of the photo. And I said, I'll make you a deal. I said, you send me your uh, glossy color print, and I will tell you what car that is. And I will send you the service and repair records for that car. Because those records showed the license plate that was clearly visible in the picture and uh, showed the serial number of the car. It was advertised in Competition Press, and uh, it was in Phoenix. Thomas Barrett, who specialized in uh, brokering uh, movie star cars and very expensive classics, uh, Duesenbergs, Rolls Royce, that kind of thing, Hispano Suiza, um, he had turned it down because it had a Corvette engine in it. And I may have been the second guy to call about it. And the fellow who had the car said, uh, well, fly on down here. And he said, if you don't take the car, I'll pay your airfare home. So I flew down. It was $1,500. It's the only way I could afford one of these at the time. Uh, but I've spent many, many years accumulating parts. And... Uh, they cost more than uh, the initial investment. Well, I wanted to restore the car to its, its new condition. And uh, uh, there were many things that I needed to acquire, many parts, engine, transmission, in, uh, dash instruments, uh, toolbox and tools. And then, of course, Someone had changed the uh, the upholstery. The interior was all changed, and it was a kind of a project that many people turned down because of the expense. I think I I heard something about Presley, but the fellow who uh, sold me this car is still around in the the Phoenix area, and he says no. He says I never never had an idea it was the Presley car. Um, no, gradually I started to run across uh, some references, and uh, I mean, I'd, I'd see a, a photo caption that would say that uh, the car that Stuck raced in 1958 had been cleaned up and sold to Presley. Well, that's hardly proof, but uh, that... That, get, that puts you on the trail. Well, a few years ago, I uh, wrote a letter to BMW, knowing that I could never afford to uh, restore these things to the condition they deserve to be in. And, uh, and I said, look, I've got these two 507s, and uh, you appear to be 
in the beginning years of running a, uh, a restoration facility. And I, I, I had been there and I said, it looks more like a, a repair shop, you know, ch changing oil and spark plugs. And I said that uh, this would be a good project and uh, you'd gain experience. And uh, uh, I would, I would, I would uh, offer to uh, uh, to accept this one back, and this one could go into the museum, where many, many more people could uh, enjoy it. If I had a choice, I'd like to keep it, but uh, I want to see this car restored. And, and all of them, really. And uh, I can't afford to do it. And so I'm happy about that. It's, it's what's good for the car is very important. Actually, it's more special to me that Hunstruck drove the car than, than that Elvis had his hands on it. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Hunch, Hunstruck. Well, I'll tell you something funny about it. People say, oh, why don't you write to uh, Graceland? Those people don't even know we had the car. They, they know what they read in the magazines. And so I tell them things they don't know about the car. No, Elvis never bought a car in Germany like that. That's what they'll say. I have it in writing. Yeah. Now, if I were in interested in uh, money only, I'd be making a mistake in turning this car over to BMW, but I want to see it restored. I want to see people have the opportunity to see the car. And that's, that's more important to me than, than me making a, a few million dollars. But this is timeless. This will, this will never fade out of my mind, it's the beauty of that fender in the line. Uh, behind, from us is a BMW 507. Uh, this car was built in 254 pieces, and this is a special piece. Uh, it was used first for the expedition of the Frankfurt Motor Show, and then uh, by Hans Stuck, by the famous uh, race driver for hill climb races. And after that, uh, it belongs to the famous uh, actor Elvis Presley. Uh, some club members um, found the car in the US. Uh, nobody knows up, um, because always had the car imported to the US, or, but it was used by a private person in Alabama, and then it was sold to Jack Custer. Uh, this car is in very rough condition, that's right. And uh, special, it was uh, used by an, an Chevrolet engine and a Chevrolet gearbox and also a rear axle from a Chevrolet. We stripped the car first down to the body shell and after that we disassembled the aluminium parts from the uh, steel metal parts and then we tip it in a, a fluid and we look what after that exists from the car and we replace this um, and also the special frame but this was cut for the Chevrolet engine. Uh, we restored a lot of BMW 507 for BMW Classic, and normally the aluminium part was um, built over a wooden form, and now we replace the wooden form for plastic form, and we make the parts from this. Also der BMW 507 äh, hat sich im Hochpreissegment befunden, auch bei den Roadstern. Ähm, er hatte natürlich auch etliche technische Finessen aufzuweisen. Er war ein Vollaluminiumblock und äh, mit 3,2 Liter Hubraum und V8 Motor. Es war schon was Besonderes. Also es konnte sich nicht jedermann leisten. Also für die Experten bei BMW Classic ist es kein Problem, Teile nachzufertigen. Wir arbeiten ja auch sehr eng äh, mit der BMW Entwicklung zusammen und können darauf zurückgreifen. Das heißt, wir können eigentlich fast jedes Teil nachfertigen. Wir werden als erstes das Fahrzeug komplett äh, zerlegen. Dann wird die Alu-Außenhaut äh, von 
der Bodengruppe getrennt, sind umgebörtelt und vernietet. Äh, Im Anschluss wird das Ganze in einem Tauchbad entlackt, die Bodengruppe instand gesetzt, weil hier auch äh, zahlreiche Veränderungen am Rahmenstruktur vorgenommen wurden. Äh, dadurch, dass da ein Chevrolet Motor eingebaut war und ein Chevrolet Getriebe, die Hinterachse vom Chevy ist immer noch im Fahrzeug vorhanden, äh, wurden teilweise die Fragmente am Rahmen komplett verändert. Dadurch, dass wir äh, für mehrere Kunden und auch für uns selbst äh, schon öfter eine Außenhaut benötigt haben, haben wir uns äh, analog den Klopfmodellen, die früher aus Holz bestanden haben, aus Kunststoff wieder eine Form angefertigt, über die wir dann das Alublech nach alter Manier dengeln lassen. Und diese wird dann auf dem Fahrzeug wieder aufgebracht. Ja, dieses Fahrzeug ist in äh, doppelter Hinsicht interessant, auch für BMW. Einmal, weil es dem prominenten Elvis Presley, der ja weltberühmt ist, gehört hat. Und zum Zweiten, äh, dieses Fahrzeug mehrere Rennen beschritten hat, auch mit Hans Stuck Senior, der ja auch kein Unbekannter ist und damit auch Erfolge erzielt wurden. Bei BMW im klassischen Archiv konnten wir nachweisen, dass das Fahrzeug von Stuck eingesetzt wurde. Das ist anhand der Fahrgestellung recherchiert. Und genauso konnten wir nachweisen, dass dieses Fahrzeug an Elvis Presley übergeben wurde. Im Sinne von Jack Castor ist es, das Fahrzeug soll einem breiten Publikum zugänglich gemacht werden. Das heißt, er wird die überwiegende Zeit im BMW-Museum stehen. Auf der anderen Seite wird er auch bei verschiedenen Veranstaltungen sicherlich dem Publikum zugänglich gemacht werden. Also Jack Custer unterscheidet sich wesentlich von den anderen Sammlern. Er hat nicht so viel Geld wie jetzt ein Banker oder ein Arzt oder Rechtsanwalt, ähm, sondern er ist ein absoluter Liebhaber. Er hat die Fahrzeuge schon in einer Zeit gekauft, wo sie eigentlich nichts wert waren, nur weil sie ihm gefallen haben oder weil sie diesen technischen Background hatten. Er wusste auch nicht, dass dieses das berühmte Fahrzeug ist, sondern er hat das Fahrzeug gekauft, weil er die Liebe zu diesem Fahrzeug hatte und hat halt durch die Recherche dann erst erfahren, um welches außergewöhnliche Stück es sich hier handelt. Äh, bei dem Fahrzeug werden sicherlich mit den verschiedenen Gewerken immer permanent ähm, fünf bis sechs Leute dran arbeiten.